Greetings everyone, my name is Angshuman Mazumdar and I will be presenting on my paper that's been published here called Synthesizing Effective Virtual Reality Multi-Character Experiences. Um, we are from Purdue University and yeah, let's get into it. First of all, here are the contents uh, for the presentation that we'll be going through. Uh, introduction, crowds in real life, crowds in virtual reality. So we find a link between both of those. We discuss the problem and the purpose, and then we state our research question. Also a little bit of the information for, about our participants. Then we move on to the methodology review. Um, we have our experimental design results from that uh, annotation phase and the optimization over overview, uh, experimental design of the user study phase and the results. Finally, we state our conclusion and uh, we state our future work. The idea behind this project started off thinking about human beings. We all are social animals. So we have this uh, innate uh, ability and drive towards gathering and being with one another. And uh, it, has the drive, it has the potential to drive the mindset of an individual. And due to that, crowds have become an overlooked aspect of our lives. Well, before the pandemic, of course. Some of the crowd scenarios that I can think of off the top of my head are concerts, rallies, marketplaces, just people coming together and, you know, forming a crowd. Uh, they were mostly inevitable before the pandemic hit, of course. Um, but till this day, we see crowds being a very common part of our daily lives. So in real life, uh, the real world interactions are based on a concept called interpersonal communication. Basically, concepts that include um, ideas such as nonverbal communication, eye gaze, proxemics, etc. Uh, for all this, uh, a, a model was uh, developed called the Ocean Model uh, that states the openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism, and they induce affect in another human being when present inside the crowd. So openness, basically, it means how willing and accepting one is of new situations. Consciousness is how disciplined you are for uh, about your own actions when you're in that crowded uh, place. Extroversion is how active and expressive you are with other people around. Agreeableness is basically how trustable you think someone else is. And neuroticism is basically how you counter stress in a complex crowded scenario. So let's look at uh, crowds in virtual reality. Most of the studies that have been done until now focus on disaster management within crowded scenarios. And also a lot of them focus on collaborative scenarios. Uh, focusing on a simulation that is targeted towards the player themselves uh, with the crowd being just a passive element in the simulation. Uh, it directly does not address any aspect of the crowd. So an example would include uh, descriptions such as Colombi and Shu, where these these papers, they display a common theme where they influence the mindset of the players during the simulation without the crowd being a major uh, factor in it. So then we move on to our problem statement where uh, we can, this paper attempts to explore the automatic synthesis of multi, multi character scenarios uh, that are affect driven by the user and how they influence design decisions and uh, you know which design decisions need to be accounted for in and in what ways to impact the mindset of the player. Um, the purpose of the study was uh, to expose players to a virtual lifelike crowd and they, the crowd had certain behavioral parameters and uh, they displayed different levels of negative affect. And we elicited some emotion or emotional response from the players. To sum it all up, our research question that we developed was, is it possible to automatically synthesize multi-character experiences that could induce a certain amount of negative effect in the participants based on a provided level of negative effect? Basically, we wanted to achieve uh, a desired outcome that we fed into the algorithm. So some of the assumptions and, part of the, and the participant details were that uh, we had, they had some sort of crowd experience, of course, to identify themselves and bring in the feeling of being within a crowded population. Um, and the participants comprised of the undergraduate and graduate students of uh, the university that I'm from, um, Purdue University. And also the annot uh, annotation sample is a control sample of 10 students from my department who had extensive exposure to virtual reality scenarios. This will be evident 
in the upcoming slides uh, about why it's so important. So our methodology was we divided this uh, project into three phases, the annotation, optimization, and final targeted synthesis phase. Annotation would be responsible for determining the values that was associated to each effect in inducing behavior. Uh, basically, we develop a table. Optimization would be responsible for creating the experience inside the engine. And the final targeted synthesis was basically the study that we conducted with the participants. Here are the primary elements that we found affected uh, crowds, essentially, when we were doing uh, crowd simulations. So there's two major factors, macroscopic and microscopic. Macroscopic is a large scale where the crowd is considered a collective and microscopic is the individual uh, elements inside the crowd and their behavior. So for this project, we focus on the microscopic factors, basically the behavior of the individual elements uh, in the crowd scenarios. Here is a short flowchart of uh, the entire overview of the project. Uh, the instruments that we used were the Unity Game Engine for developing the experience and for delivering it, we used the Oculus Quest. Also, we had a questionnaire uh, which, was connect, uh, which was collected using a 100-point scale and a Panas questionnaire. Let us talk about our experimental design. First of all, this remained uh, same throughout uh, all the phases of the project. Basically, a scene that comprised of a sidewalk from an urban environment, and we had some predetermined locations for spawning the characters in the crowd. Uh, and it, each of these characters had a certain behavior, and they were conveyed using animations and scripted behaviors. And uh, basically, we wanted them to produce a negative effect in the mind of the player. Uh, the player was only able to move their head around to observe, so the camera would be moving uh, automatically. They wouldn't have to put any input. And all the scenes were shown in an order determined by 11 square design. So, to sum it all up, we have 34 scenes in the annotation phase, and each annotation phase had just one behavior. So, we, we had to establish our data set. The number of scenes in the final synthesis phase would be one for three targeted levels that we had decided to go for, and each of these would have around 10 uh, behaviors, not around 10, but exactly 10. This will be evident in the future when we are talking about the cost terms. Here is uh, a sample view of how the sidewalk looked. We tried to make it look as normal as possible and as less distracting as possible for the participants so that they could focus on the crowd. Here is the grid locations for all the uh, crowd spawning locations, as well as the path where the starting position and the end position of the player is displayed. And this is how it looks like when the characters are just spawned in without any sort of behavior applied to them. So moving on, talking about the experimental design of the annotation phase, we have that each participant will view all the 34 scenes, so 34 behaviors. Um, in, this, in this phase, the characters would change from a random selection of a set number of pool of characters that we pulled in from a site such as Mixmo. And the reason was for uh, the user to not associate one behavior with one character. We wanted the we wanted the user to just focus on the behavior, not the character themselves. And the behavior of uh, each character remained the same with the idle no look at state as the base state. This is a sample uh, behavior table for how we created uh, the behaviors. So, for an example, you could see, uh, you could take a single behavior to be the combination of let's say walk across intimate and look at so these three factors combine to give you one behavior similarly walk across personal no look at would be another sort of behavior in total we had 34 behaviors so these are some of the example screenshots that of how the models look like up close in the vr scenario on the top you have the no look at and the bottom you have the look at again all models were imported from uh mixamo this is how an individual character looked like. Each character had certain scripts which uh, determined their three different in, uh, spaces which we bro uh, broke up uh, their distances accordingly. And inside uh, each of these spaces is where the appropriate behavior would be executed or triggered. And the gray zone is basically the FOV so that the person feels believable and when we enter their vision field, the behavior gets triggered. We don't want it to be executed when the player just moves away from them. 
This is an example of the data collection questionnaire that we used. Basically, you can see we we found four terms from the PNAS questionnaire and then we modified it into a 100 point scale and we presented it to the participants after each of the uh, scenarios that got run. So here are the results from the annotation phase. Each of these represent one behavior and we have ranked them from a scale of zero to one. The higher the value, the higher the average ne negative effect that it produced within the participant. Yeah, as you can see, there's uh, idle NLA being our base state, which is idle no look at produced the least negative effect because it was technically the user felt that they were not interacting with the crowd. So now let's talk about optimization once we have this database built up we know of uh, how each behavior ranks from a scale of zero to one we followed a markov chain modern Monte carlo technique it was called simulate anything and basically we developed three cost terms that we fed into the algorithm for it to work and give us the optimized solution the three cost terms were affect cost affect billions cost and duplicate behavior cost so let's take a look at the affect cost or term that we used in the optimization algorithm. Basically, it depends on the targeted mean value, which we provide as developers or as the person, uh, as the target that uh, the average needs to be achieved. And uh, we have a total number of characters. So the idea behind this is that uh, we want the least uh, value for CA to be achieved, which Ideally, it would be zero if you have your average, <coughs> excuse me, average effect of all the characters present and our target effect being essentially the same, it would give you a value of zero. Similar is it with variance cost, uh, the exact same concept where sigma v gives you the targeted variance that we want the program to look towards. And if it achieves the ideal condition, this would also be zero. Finally, we take a look at the duplicate behavior cost. This was put in place just so that there weren't any repeating behaviors, which in essence break some of the real life features that we were trying to aim for. Here, the total number of combinations that we found was one by 45, given that there were 10 animations that had to be displayed in the simulation. The gamma function is basically this a decider function, whether it will be a zero or a one. If it's the same behavior, we give it a high cost value. And if it's a if it's a different behavior, we give it a value of zero. So essentially, we want our total cost to have a value close to zero or ideally zero. Here is a graph of how the workflow of the optimization happened. So basically, we start off in the optimization phase, we input the affect values, then behaviors are pulled into the scene and the total cost initial Tool cost was calculated and then a random behavior is replaced. We calculate the new cost and then uh, based on certain parameters of randomness, we either accept or reject that. And once the entire scene has been reached to a certain value, we basically synthesize it for low, medium and high effect. Basically, we provide a low value, a medium value and a high value. And once all the three scenes are done, we expose the participants to one scene, collect the responses then expose them to the second one, collect the responses, and so on and so forth. Here is uh, an example of how the graph and also the script inside the Unity engine looks like. A good idea on how to visualize this is basically the traffic light system, the red, yellow, green, where red comes first. So we put in our target values at first, and then the yellow part is just the algorithm doing its calculations. And at the end, the final result that we get is a list of 10 behaviors that will be applied to the characters in the simulation. Now here is just a bunch of numbers, but basically these numbers are cross-referenced with a dictionary uh, that contains uh, the index number of each of the behaviors. So basically it looks up and it searches for 0 0.569 on that dictionary and then finds the appropriate behavior and applies it to one of the characters. Uh, it does that for all 10 of the behaviors until we have 10 different behaviors that are in the scene. On the right, the optimization graph is basically looking for uh, the best solution. We introduce some errors randomly so that we get uh, the most optimal solution. And after 500 frames, you can see that it settles to a proper uh, st stable position. And uh, there are certain factors that we check. We, ch we check for a difference in, um, I think it's 2%. In the past 100 iterations, if there's not a 2% difference, then we stop the simulation. So here, 
is the final behavior table for the low target effect condition. As you can see here, the tick marks are the ones that were selected for the simulation. Most of them are in the no look at part, which correlates with some of the background research that we did in our literature review. The optimization target that we wanted for the low scene to be achieved was 0.3 and we kept the variance same for all of them at 0.5. This is the medium target effect condition. Um, again, we gave the target value of 0.5. And here you can see there's almost an equal number of behaviors for look at and no look at. And finally, the behavior table for high target effect, the value that we provided was 0.7. And you can see it is more towards the look at side, again, correlating with the paper that discussed about how look at conditions affect users more in crowds and they give off a more negative feel. So now let us take a look at the experimental design for the user study phase. Uh, this was a within group study. So all participants were exposed to all three scenarios. Uh, for statistical analysis, we preferred the one way repeated measures ANOVA. Uh, we wanted to explore the differences across all the three experimental conditions. And for the final study phase, the character pool was again limited to 10 characters. Um, just so as to eliminate any visual inconsistencies, we kept the characters the same. And again, Latin square design was used to determine the order of the presented scenarios. Here are some results for the demographics. There were quite a number of people who had experienced VR, but there were also people who didn't experience VR. And also there's a breakdown of average number of gaming, uh, average hours of gaming that people did. And finally, here are the results for our user study phase. We had total number of participants were 57. And out of those, there were three outliers. And here are the values for the statistical analysis. And finally, the means and standard deviations. The low condition achieved a mean of 31.71, medium of 36.73, and a high of 40.68. And also there were uh, post hoc Bonferroni correlations that were being estimated. So here is a box plot of the user study results. And finally, to conclude, what all this means? Well, the low negative effect scene was rated lower than the medium, and the medium was rated lower than the high. Also, comments indicated towards participants identifying the hostile and negative nature of the crowd. They felt the hostility against them in the virtual scenarios. And the feeling was strengthened by the invasion of spatial zones. Basically, inclusion of proxemics was a step in the right direction. So that is something that we found out uh, through this uh, project. So to conclude it all, the research question has been addressed. It can be confirmed that it is indeed possible to automatically synthesize multi-character experiences that can induce a certain amount of negative effect in participants provided a level of target has been given. Future extensions, let's discuss some of that. So this experiment that we did was sort of a stepping stone for future plans that we have um, we wanted this to be a starter, just a base foundational experiment that could lead up to something more. So we wanted, we have plans to include more behaviors in the data set, more complex behaviors. We definitely want to include sounds and audio components of it. Uh, we also want to do crowds that have, uh, that can be physiologically annotated. So we're using techniques such as GSR and EEG. Also, we want to make the scenarios more complex basically includes things such as interactive games, puzzles, maybe a more involving scenario. Also, inclusion of more design terms is something that we are trying to look at. Uh, we wanted to keep it at three as a minimum, just so that it was simpler to calculate. But then again, it gave us one of the most effective branches or paths to go to. And the inclusion of behavior trees and event centric trees, this is something that we were trying to discuss that could be a good future inclusion. So here, I would just like to present to you a short demo video of how it looked like for the users to experience it in VR. This is a demo for the high negative affect condition.
So yeah, these are the references. And thank you very much. That was me, Anshuman Mazumdar, with my professor, Dr. Christos Moses from Purdue University, presenting our topic.